Hello guys and welcome back to a new video. Today a little bit of an unscripted video because I will just show you my Arch Linux setup. Here we are on my desktop. First, let's talk about the theme. My desktop is themed with black and red. I did some rising, like just a little, little bit because I'm not that into rising and KDE, my desktop environment looks very good out of the box. So I just tweaked some colors to make it red and black because red and black is my theme of my game only control. And my desktop is themed after my game only control. You can check it out on itch.io right now. It's down in the description. So the taskbar icon is also the icon of my game. And yeah, everything is red and black. So let's go into the settings and show a bit around what I exactly use. Here in the colors and themes, I have my own colors. The breeze darker red. Darker means the black in the background is just pure black because breeze dark is like pretty light in comparison. I just have pure black and everything which was blue is now red in my theme. Then we have application style the default, plasma style default, window decoration default, icons also default, curves are also default, sounds also default. The splash screen is the arch splash screen because I like some archiness to my setup like in Windows you have the Windows logo at the beginning so I have the arch logo at the beginning because I didn't want to have the KDE logo at the beginning. The login screen is the breeze login screen with this picture in the background so we have the same picture and that's everything look wise the wallpaper I have many different wallpapers this is the wallpaper I use right now but I am not sure about it because I would like to have another wallpaper with red and black but there aren't just many good red and black wallpapers which you can use which also looks good on many different screens so I just use this ROG one but I actually don't want to have ROG in my wallpaper but it is what it is until i found a new wallpaper i will just use this one okay let's get to the apps i use because i'm a student i go to computer science school and as a computer science student i have to use many different apps for productivity and coding and stuff so i will just show you around a bit how i use my arch setup in my school even if my school wants me to use windows so most of my school is microsoft office so most importantly I have a browser I use the Brave browser for my Firefox based browser I have Waterfox but I don't really use it just for some development stuff so I have two different browsers and the Chromium browser is Brave because I just like the built-in ad blocker the VPN and stuff it's just really nice and handy to have it right there available and not that hard to set up you have just everything out of the box and the crypto stuff I don't really care about that so it's fine for me then I have my shortcuts my school shortcut there is everything i need for school and because it's microsoft i need to use in school i just have the microsoft 365 shortcut right here and i just do almost everything in the web versions of apps because we uh, just use OneNote, and OneNote in the web is fine i guess and teams is also fine so i can just use it in the web and it doesn't hurt anyone and everything else is browser based anyways so i just have use a good browser and have some shortcuts ready available so i can keep up with the others on windows but what else do we need for school we need an ide and for that we have vs code right here also a little theme applied so it's pure black because i have a theme for almost any app that it is just pure black and right now we are just doing some web development stuff so it's pretty simple even on arch linux that's almost the simplest thing you can develop on almost every operating system because you just need a text editor and a browser and you're good to go. You can start web development. But as is important, it's the Oracle Virtual Box because we are doing some virtual stuff. At the moment, we have some bash that we learn. We learn some bash. That's pretty simple for me because, well, bash is right here, ready available. So I don't need the Ubuntu VM. I can just use my Arch Linux. But reverse thing, I need a Windows VM for PowerShell because we have that also right now at school. So I just have here my Windows 10 VM. Uh, it says Windows 8, but it's a Windows 10 VM right here. And I also want to set up this VM for other use cases so I can use it really for any Windows based thing. So I have to switch less to my Windows machine. 
because I dual boot Arch Linux and Windows 11 because some things I still need Windows 11. Then for school, that was almost it, but we can go through the other things. Kate is a very cool text editor because it has some syntax highlighting, but it doesn't get in the way or something like that. And I just use it for taking notes, writing some markdown or even writing bash scripts because like I said, we have bash at the moment in school. Then next we have Visual Studio. I already showed that. Seal is just some simple documentation for different programming languages. Like here we have HTML, JavaScript and CSS. And it's very simple, very easy, ready available to launch because we need that for some exams. And it's also really useful in school to just look up some parameters of some CSS property or something like that. Then the next thing, education. LibreOffice is my office suite of choice. I just use it to open Word documents and then edit them. And I use LibreOffice Dra to open or to edit PDF documents and then I convert it back to PDF so I can use the PDF worksheets they give us in school. Games, very important. I have just some games because I don't really game, but I have Among Us installed, Doom 1 and 2, Ghost Runner because Ghost Runner is the gold game, Heroic Game Launcher for everything GOG games and for all Epic Game Launcher games. We can open it right now. The gold games I still want to play and all the other games. Then we have itch.io because my game only control, which you see right here, is on itch.io. And to manage it, I just recently downloaded itch.io so I can get the updates faster. Then the gold of all games. I'm just kidding. It's my own game, only control right here, running natively on Linux, on Arch Linux, ready available just to jump into a game. Oh, no spoilers, I guess, but it's right here, running on Linux. If you want to check it out, like I already said, it's down below. Then we have Prism Launcher for everything Minecraft related because the normal Minecraft launcher just doesn't work. It starts up, it downloads Minecraft, I can launch Minecraft, I want to start the launcher back up and boom, it's break. It doesn't work anymore. I have to re-download the whole launcher. So I just got Prism Launcher and in here we have some different instances for my Minecraft and Prism Launcher, it's also really easy to add mods and resource packs and stuff like that. So I just made myself a little configuration where I have some cool mods installed. Uh, Minecraft runs really, really poorly on Linux. Like, what the hell is that? Why is it so laggy? I'm just launching Minecraft with nothing else. Why is this so fucking laggy? I don't know, but this is, this is my Minecraft mod pack I put together. But let's get out of this laggy mess, that, which is Minecraft and check out the next few things on here that was prism launcher next we have steam obviously steam pretty important pretty easy to launch games on linux choose download choose your proton version and the game will run trackmania also a game i installed and wolfenstein 3d i can uninstall that actually because i don't play it then we have blender blender i don't know i have it also with this cool color scheme that it is dark right here because everything has to be dark and yeah we just just have Blender right here. I'm really, really bad at modeling. The only good thing I modeled is my character in only control. That was actually my first character model in Blender and it came out pretty well, but since then I didn't really model anything else. So I can't really model that good and I'm pretty slow and bad and yeah, pretty embarrassing. Let's get the heck out of here. The next thing we have is GIMP. GIMP is very important because I don't have an image viewer installed. If we go here into Dolphin, my file manager, and then go to pictures, open a picture, it opens it in GIMP because I don't have an image viewer. That's just unnecessary. Who needs an image viewer if you just have GIMP? Because GIMP starts up pretty fast. So I can just click on an image and open it directly. Or alternatively, I can also just open it in the browser. So I don't need an image viewer if I can just open my image that way. And if I want to edit my image, I just do it through GIMP because GIMP is way more complete than like Microsoft image viewer or something like that. So I just use GIMP for that and or for creating thumbnails and all that. Then internet, we have Discord, really important, but there is an annoying thing because every time Discord updates, you have to re-download the whole thing like that. Now we can start up Discord once again. So I can show you Discord and now it updates again, even if we did the update. Okay. And there we go. Discord also with the dark theme. And yeah, that's, that's just Discord. 
right here. So this got really annoying on Linux because every update has to install that way. It takes a few seconds longer because you have to do some manual clicks, but it's not that bad. Then we have Airtame to like share the screen and stuff for school, but Airtame just doesn't work. Kdenlive Live for editing videos. Almost all of my videos are now edited with Kdenlive Live because DaVinci Resolve is ass to set up on Linux and I don't want to bother with that. I don't have the knowledge, I don't have the time, I don't have the courage and I don't have the mind to install DaVinci Resolve. So I will just use open source software like right here, Kden Live. Yes, yeah, see media player for videos because I need to watch videos somehow. So I just have VLC right here. Then next office, the entire office suite is LibreOffice and Obsidian for my personal notes right here. My little Obsidian graph also with pitch black theme because everything has to be pitch black. Then what else do we have? Bluetooth manager is Blue Man. Uh, I don't know, Discover, File Manager, HDOP, Console, my terminal emulator of choice because it just came with KDE and it's also a really good terminal emulator. Like you can customize it really well, I guess. And it's also pretty cool. Let's do a quick Neo fetch of my system and HDOP, like I said, is also installed. Then we have some other utilities I installed. Spectacle is my screenshot manager, KWrite. I don't know why I have it. It's just another text editor. I just use Kate all the time, not K, right? Emoji selector for emojis, Vim because you need Vim in the console, and Arc for archives. And yeah, that's my whole Arch setup. It's pretty simple. I have two desktop environments, Hyperland and KDE. KDE is my main one. If you want to learn more about my Hyperland setup, watch this video right here. My KDE setup is this right here with the red and black theme, everything theme after my own game, only control. And yeah, that's my whole setup for product activity for school for just everyday main use i have this right here if you want to check out my game only control it launches soon check it on each channel io that's like the third time i said that this video and yeah if you found this video interesting you can try it out yourself with a dual boot like i did if you are unsure and if you are sure you want to use art it's not that hard i'm a normal person but i also like did it and installed arch linux and i can use it right here see you in the next video Bye-bye.